is one half m of the electron times the speed at a squared. So now you see that accepting the fact that we know the equipotentials, we can very quickly calculate the kinetic energy and therefore the speed of the electron as they arrive at A without any knowledge of the complicated electric field. If you put in the numbers for the mass of the electron, then, which is 9 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, then you find that this speed is about 2% of the speed of light, substantial speed. All our potentials, electric potentials, are defined relative to infinity. That means at infinity, they are zero. That is because of the 1 over r relationship. That's very nice and dandy, and it works. However, there are situations whereby it really doesn't matter where you think of your zero. You remember with gravity, we had a similar situation. With gravity, we always worried about difference in potential energy, but sometimes we call this zero and this plus. Sometimes you call this plus and this minus. It doesn't really matter because the change in kinetic energy is dictated only by the difference in potentials. So it is very nice and dandy to call that 150 and to call that 50, but you wouldn't have find any different answer for the electron if you call this potential 100 volts and you call this one zero, or you call this one zero and this one minus 100, or you call this one 50 and this one minus 50. So the behavior of the electrons, of the charges, would of course not change. And of course electrical engineers would always, per definition, call the potential of the Earth zero when they built their circuits. So now I would like to demonstrate to you with the Van de Graaff that if you get a strong electric field from the radially outwards from the Van de Graaff, that you get a huge potential difference between this point here and this point there. Uh, if I have my numbers still there, I hope I do, there they are at the surface of the Van de Graaff, which takes about 10 microcoulomb, it would be 300,000 volts right here. Here it would be 150,000 volts. And here, three meters from the center, it's about 30 kilovolts. So that means that if I place this fluorescent tube into that electric field, that there would be a gigantic potential difference between here and there, provided I hold it radially. If I hold it like this, then the potential difference between here and there would be zero, of course, if I hold it tangentially. They would be both at the same electric potential. But when I hold them radially, you will see, perhaps, that this fluorescent tube will show a little bit of light. Once you see light, it means that electrons are moving through that gas. It means charge is moving. We haven't discussed currents yet, but that's what it means. A current is flowing. And this current has to be delivered by the Van de Graaff. And the Van de Graaff is only capable of providing very modest currents. So you're not going to see a lot of light. But I want to show you that you will see some light. No wires attached, just here. And then I will rotate it tangentially, and you will see no light at all. So if we can make it a little darker as a start, and I'll start the Van de Graaff. And then if Marcos comes to make it completely dark when necessary, because the light is so little that we really have to make it completely dark, I will put on a glove for safety reasons, although I don't think it will do me much good. <laughs> Notice I have here a piece of glass to, well, to be well insulated from the glass so that I don't mess up the demonstration by if I hold my fingers here, it will be very different than holding my hands here. So let's go first close without with the light still on. And then, OK, why don't you turn the lights off now, all the way off. OK, I, I think you can see a glow. It's radially outwards now. 
And Marcos, can you give a little light? Okay, I will now go tangential. Can you turn uh, the lights off? And now you see nothing, very little. And now I go radial again. And there you go. Now, if, I, if I'm crazy, if I were crazy, then I would touch the end of this tube with my finger, thereby allowing this current to go straight through my body to the earth, which may increase the light. <laughs> Let me try that. So, so I'm going to touch the, 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 this, this fluorescent tube on your right side. Ah! 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 Every time I, I touch it, ah! But that's not ah! But you see, every time I touch it, I make it easier for the current to flow, and you see very clearly that it lights up. Now I want to do the same demonstration with a neon flash tube. And the neon flash tube I will place at the end of a fishing rod. This neon flash tube we used during the first lecture when I was beating up students. But I've learned not to do that anymore. Um, this takes uh, several kilovolts to get a little bit of light out of it from one side to the other. Well, that's duck soup for the Venn graph. You know, you're talking about hundreds and thousands of volts. And so here, I will actually start spinning it. And then when it is radially inwards, maybe you will see light. And when it is tangential, you won't see much light. And then, if I feel very good, I will do that again. OK, uh, so Marcos, if you make it uh, dark, I'll give it a twist. Okay, radio, 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 radio. Okay, now I... Ah! Okay, I touch it now. I touch it again. And I touch it again. And again. And again. You see, every time I touch it, it lights me. And it gives a nice flash of light. So you see here, in front of your eyes, without any wires attached, that the potential difference created by the electric field, that those potential differences make these lights work. All right, see you Friday.